This is also set in California, land of the teenage lesbians. So this one is great if you were a horse girl. That's not a spoiler, it's the friggin' Scottish play. Well hi there, my name is Perry and welcome to the Literary Niterary. So today I am bringing you 20 recommendations for books with female-female relationships. Often on your travels around the bookish internet you may see people say things like, there are no female-female books, there are no books that have ever been written that have a relationship between two women, it do do doesn't exist. We know of course that there are many, many books dedicated to female-female relationships and queer women falling in love with other women. Um, there are even entire blogs dedicated to collecting and reviewing those books, and it's wonderful. But with that said, there could always be more female-female books, and the books that already do exist do not get nearly as much attention and hype and praise as they deserve. So today I'm doing my part to combat that by coming to you with a list of 20 books for your TBR that feature female-female relationships. I compiled this list based on what I myself have incidentally read over the course of the past three or four years, just sort of going about my regular life, um, so it is by no means a perfect or perfectly representative list of what is out there. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it has two major shortcomings. First of all, the list is almost entirely YA, and second of all, the list is not diverse enough. It definitely centers the white American queer experience, but compiling the list was a useful exercise in showing me what I need to read more of in order to broaden my horizons in the future. So while making this list I wasn't sure exactly how prevalent or central the romance should be, but I've tried to go for books that all have a female-female relationship whose development or progression is significant in some way to the story, if that makes sense. But anyway, without any further ado, let's get into the books themselves. First of all, I would like to quickly shout out my current read, which is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. This is a brand new 2020 release, and it follows Liz, whose financial aid for the college she wants to attend has fallen through, so she decides that she is going to run for prom queen at her school because the winner gets a scholarship. However, things get slightly more complicated when the new girl Mac, who Liz thinks is really smart and funny and cute, turns out to also be running for prom queen and Liz might just be falling for the competition. Uh, obviously I can't review this yet because I haven't finished reading it, but it seems like it's just going to be super sweet and a lot of fun. Moving on, I have sort of loosely grouped the rest of the books, and this first group is going to be um, sort of classics of sapphic literature or just books that are slightly older. So for First of all, I would like to talk about The Price of Salt or Carol by Patricia Highsmith. Um, this is said to be the first book ever published where a lesbian couple has a happy ending. So this book follows Therese, a set designer who is temporarily working at a department store to make ends meet when she runs into and is instantly attracted to a woman named Carol, and the book basically just follows the development of their relationship and romance. Of course, everything has to stay sort of secretive because it is the 1950s, and Patricia Highsmith uh, is primarily a suspense mystery thriller writer, so there is a bit of a suspenseful mystery element to the book as well. Um, this book is super atmospheric, uh, the 50s aesthetic is really enjoyable, and there is a sort of darker um, suspense plot on the way to the groundbreaking happy ending. Next up I want to talk about Annie on My Mind by Nancy Garden. This is a pretty straightforward YA novel, but it was groundbreaking when it was published in the early 80s. It basically follows two girls, Liza and Annie, who meet at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and develop a friendship that eventually blossoms into something more but Liza is the uh, student body president at her fairly conservative private high school, and so her relationship and her sexuality kind of have to remain a secret. This is a classic of queer YA and YA in general, so it's just a really sweet story about two girls from different backgrounds growing together, growing closer, learning about themselves and each other. Uh, I will warn you that there is some homophobia in the book and also some sort of forced outing. And finally in this group we have Empress of the World by Sarah Ryan. This book is about Nicola who is at an academic in Richmond summer program where she's basically taking college level courses in archaeology because that's something she's interested in and she meets a group of friends and also a girl named Battle and the book is basically about uh, developing and exploring the relationship between her and Battle. This book was published in 2001 so it is a little bit older than the other books on this list um, so in contrast to some of the other books the um, homophobia and biphobia of the girls peer group is a central focus of the book and it's a little angstier than some of the other uh, books on this list as well like the relationship itself the central relationship between Nicola and Battle is a little bit more fraught <laughs> than you might see in some of the like rom-coms on this list, but I appreciated how passionate uh, our main character was about archaeology and theater, and I appreciated that she identified as bisexual on the page. Moving right along, we are going to slide into the speculative side of things, so that is all of our fantasy, science fiction, and horror books, and first up we have Sawkill Girls by Claire Legrand. This book is set on the island of Sawkill Rock where girls keep disappearing. We follow Marion, who lost her sister, Zoe, who lost her best friend, and Val, daughter of the island's most wealthy and influential family who might just know something about it. The relationships between these girls are tense and constantly shifting, but they're all connected to each other in a way that they don't yet realize. This is a horror book. It is super creepy. I loved the atmosphere. I loved the mood. 
Um, if you like secret societies and conspiracy theories and like creepy monsters, this would be a great book for you. But as in all good speculative fiction, the horror elements in this book are used as a metaphor to explore the effects of grief and trauma on these main characters. The book explores lots of different kinds of relationships between girls, um, with a female-female relationship developing between two of them, and also one of the characters, Zoe, is uh, black and asexual. Next up we have The Weight of the Stars by Kay Ankrum. So Ryan Burt has been taking care of her younger brother and her younger brother's child since her parents died in a car crash and she's been taking care of sort of lost and troubled kids at school. So her teacher asks her to take care of the new girl Alexandria, whose mother left on a one-way space expedition right after she was born. Um, unfortunately, things don't go smoothly, and after a mishap, Ryan ends up sitting on Alexandria's roof, uh, helping her collect radio signals from her mother out in space. Um, but Ryan also dreams of the stars. There is a really solid friendship group, if you like friendship group books. Um, I personally found the first half of the book a little bit shaky, but the second half of the book had me sobbing. So I definitely recommend this if you like enemies to lovers, slow burn vibes, and characters having conversations about how to make meaning out of life. It was really beautiful. So next up we have We Set the Dark on Fire by Taylor K. Mejia. This is a dystopian book set in a society where elite men take two wives. One, the Primera, helps with all of this sort of planning and strategy and brainy stuff. And the other one, the Segunda, bears and raises the children and does the cooking and does a lot of the so more sort of like housewifey things. And also there's a lot of sort of conflict and turmoil in the city between the privileged center city and the impoverished periphery of the island. So in this setting, our main character Daniela has been training to be the Primera of an elite boy that she's set to marry, um, but she also has a secret, which is that she's not really supposed to be there. She's had to forge her papers to be able to enter this sort of elite training school. Um, so she ends up embroiled with some rebels who are blackmailing her and requiring her to help them out in order to keep her secret quiet. And everything gets even more complicated when she starts to fall for her husband's other wife. Um, so this has an all Latinx cast with a setting and culture obviously inspired by Latin America and current political events. It's definitely textual rather than subtextual. You do not have to dig for this one. Um, but I did enjoy the sort of intrigue and spy action and the forbidden nature of the romance. Next up we have A Fire and Stars by Audrey Coulthurst, which is about Princess Danelea, who travels to a new kingdom in order to make an arranged marriage that will cement a political alliance. But magic is illegal in her new home and she definitely has a little bit of magic going on. To make things even more complicated, she's falling in love with her fiance's sister. So this one is great if you were a horse girl. So I recommend this book to you if you liked the Pony Pals books when you were younger and if you liked the spies, court intrigue, and forbidden romance from We Set the Dark on Fire. Um, is the world building perfect? No, but if you want a book where there are two Disney princesses and they kiss each other, this is that book. Okay, next up and very different tonally, we have As I Descended by Robin Talley. This is a Macbeth retelling with an all queer cast. So basically Maria and Lily are the power couple of their elite boarding school and they need Maria to get a scholarship handed out to one student from each graduating class. Only one person stands in their way, Delilah, the school's it girl. It turns out they'll do almost anything to get what they want, including possibly dabbling in the supernatural. So this is a sapphic Macbeth retelling, as I said, and there are lots of creepy southern gothic vibes from the boarding school setting. Um, one of the main characters, Lily, is disabled, and if I recall correctly, there's also some Latinx representation. I will warn you, though, that things end badly for the queer and disabled characters, not because the author hates them, but because it is a Macbeth retelling and things end badly for almost everyone. So there's your warning for that. That's not a spoiler, it's the friggin' Scottish play. Next up we have Adaptation by Melinda Lowe. This is more of a sci-fi pick. Basically, Reese and her longtime crush David are competing at a debate competition when all across the country, birds spontaneously fly into airplanes, causing lots and lots of plane crashes. Um, the world devolves into chaos briefly, and while they're trying to get home, they end up in a car accident. Uh, they wake up later inside of a military hospital, miraculously healed, but nobody will tell them where they are, or how they were healed, or what's going on going on. Um, they go home, but the effects of their treatment and their stay at the hospital seem to be following them. And then Reese runs into the beautiful and mysterious Amber, who might not be everything that she seems. So this is great if you like conspiracy theories or the X-Files, and the main character Reese is bisexual. Um, I will warn you that there is a little bit of sort of surprise or accidental outing in the book, but it ends okay. Okay, my next pick is another fantasy, and that is Girls Made of Snow and Glass by Melissa Basherdust. This is basically a sort of dark feminist take on Snow White with a tiny dash of Frozen for good measure. Lynette is the princess of a snowbound kingdom and she has ice and snow powers herself. Her stepmother Mina expects to inherit the crown when Lynette's father dies, but instead it passes directly to Lynette, suddenly pitting these two women against each other. To make matters more complicated, Mina believes she's not capable of love because her sorcerer father replaced her heart 
with a heart of glass. Now Lynette seems to be in danger from the only mother she's ever known, so she and surgeon girl Nadia have to run away to sort of discover the truth and survive and bring justice to the kingdom. Uh, the sort of mother-daughter relationship between Mina and Lynette is definitely central, and I remember really enjoying the sort of dark and creepy magic in this book. So if you like dark fairy tale retellings, this one could be for you. My final speculative pick is Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. Basically, this is set on the island of By the Sea, where a mysterious and one-of-a-kind bird comes to roost every year, and all of the Fernwell women eventually develop magical powers. Except this year, the bird is super late in showing up, and Georgina hasn't gotten her powers yet. Then this book basically follows what happens next. So this is basically a really beautiful, lush, atmospheric novel about all of the things women can be and can be to one another. So there is a really realistic feeling mother-daughter relationship. There is a really realistic feeling complicated um, sister relationship. There is a best friend type relationship with side uh, asexual representation. Um, and there is a female-female romance, which is really sweet. Moving on to our contemporary books. First up is Tell Me How You Really Feel by Amina May Safi. Basically, it's senior year and ambitious filmmaker Rachel is super behind on her capstone project, so her teacher forces her to cast Sana in the title role. Unfortunately, Rachel has hated Sana ever since Sana asked her out freshman year and Rachel thought it was a cruel joke. Now both of them are facing important decisions, but time is running out. This book is a great pick for you if you like enemies to lovers stories or stories about ambitious girls chasing their dreams and finding their voices. There's even some bonus Greek mythology thrown in. Next up, we have The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. This is a sort of dark and moody Twelfth Night retelling. So our main character, Violet, is sent to stay with her uncle in Lyric, Maine after her younger brother's suicide attempt, and she is really just trying to keep her head down and stay out of trouble for once. Eventually, though, she falls in with a group of friends, including a girl who is encouraging her to look into the mysteries of the town's past. This is a Twelfth Night retelling with a true bisexual love triangle. Um, it's definitely dark and hard-hitting, but it's also really beautiful and moving, and I really recommend it. Okay, next up we have Everything Needs to You by Nina LaCour. So Emmy is a set designer in LA and she's attending an estate sale at a dead celebrity's house with her boss when she finds a mysterious letter that leads her directly to Ava, a beautiful, talented young actress who is also shrouded in her own kind of mystery. Emmy definitely wants to uncover the secrets of Ava's past, but maybe she also wants to be a part of Ava's future. This is a great book for you if you love film. It has really summery vibes and the romance is super, super cute. Basically the central emotional journey of the book is Emmy realizing that real life and real life romance isn't like the romance you see in the movies, but it might be worth a shot anyway. Following up on that, we have You Know Me Well by Nina LaCour and David Levithan. This follows Kate, who has been crushing on her best friend's cousin for a very long time now, but now that they finally have the opportunity to meet, Kate panics and runs away. She ends up running directly into Mark, who has been in love with his best friend Ryan for years. The two of them strike up a friendship, and the book is set over a week as they get to know each other better and make decisions about the relationships in their lives. So this book also has strong summer vibes. It is set during Pride Month, and it features two characters developing a platonic bond and realizing that they deserve good things in romantic relationships, which is just pretty wholesome. Next up, we have The Summer of Jordi Perez and the Best Burger in Los Angeles by Amy Spaulding. This is also set in California, land of the teenage lesbians. So this book basically follows Abby, who has a very successful plus-size fashion blog and now has a coveted internship at her very favorite vintage boutique. But then she discovers that she is sharing the internship with photographer Jordi, and the two of them are competing for one permanent job slot at the end of the summer. But once again, it turns out that Jordi is really cute and Abby might be falling for her competition. So this is just a delightfully fun and fluffy female-female rom-com with strong summer vibes. We have a fat main character and a Latina love interest, and we basically have Abby realizing that she deserves to be the main character and the star of her own life, learning to step into the spotlight and take a chance. Okay, next up we have This Is What It Feels Like by Rebecca Barrow. I am 90% sure this is also set in California because of course it is. And it follows three girls who used to be best friends and who used to have a band, but that was before. That was before Dia's boyfriend died and she discovered she was pregnant with his child, and that was before Hannah's alcohol issues spiraled out of control. But now there's a local music contest with an amazing prize for the winner, so they might just be getting the band back together. Uh, one of the main characters is a black lesbian who has a female-female relationship with a plus-sized love interest. This is not a light book, but it is a fundamentally hopeful book about friends learning how to grow together. It's about healing, it's about love. 
uh, and it captures the feeling of performing on stage really really well which I enjoyed and like so many of these books it has fun summer vibes so it could be a good pick for right now. Next up we have a slightly heavier pick which is Orpheus Girl by Bryn Rebel Henry. Basically Rhea is caught in an intimate moment with her girlfriend Sarah and the two of them are both sent to conversion camp where Rhea vows that like Orpheus she will lead her girl out of hell. This author is a poet and that really shines through in the beautiful concentrated language of this book. Um, obviously there are one million content warnings here for homophobia and transphobia, self-harm and suicide attempts, and violence against LGBT characters. So it's a very painful book but it is also a beautifully written book. It's definitely not for everyone but something I really enjoyed about it was the way that instead of being a direct literal retelling, Rhea herself was using the Greek mythology that she loves to sort of understand and process her own situation and to give herself hope. And I really like stories about how people use stories. And finally for this video, number 20, we have Echo After Echo by Amy Rose Capetta, which is a very special book to me. This book follows aspiring actor Zara, who attends a casting call for a production of her very favorite play put on by a famous and famously demanding director. Against all odds, she gets the title role, and then said director makes her promise not to indulge in any sort of outside commitments or distractions. But then Zara sees the lighting designer plummet to his death inside the theater, which is pretty distracting. Also distracting, assistant lighting designer Eli and how gosh darn cute she is. The production seems to be dogged by misfortune and everyone begins to wonder if the play is cursed, at which point Zara and Eli have to sort of get to the bottom of things. This features a Jewish bisexual main character and a Puerto Rican lesbian love interest. This book made me feel seen in so many ways. Uh, it parallels my life in frankly too many ways to enumerate on the internet. This is the book that really made me understand how important representation in literature is. Um, obviously I believed that it was important before but this was the book that brought it home to me on an emotional level, just how good it feels to see yourself reflected in a book. The romance is adorable, the book combats biphobic tropes, there is a central Greek play that the author uses to sort of comment on what is happening and how the characters understand themselves and understand what love is, and it's just the love that the author has for theater really shines through and it's just delightful. Okay guys, that's it for today. That is 20 books I've read and recommend that feature a female-female relationship. So the next time somebody tries to tell you there are no female-female relationships in books, you can just send this video their way. Let me know if you've read any of these books or what your favorite female-female romance is if you have one. Once again, there will be links in the description to resources surrounding pertinent social issues in the world. Happy Pride! My videos for most of the rest of June similarly focus on queer or LGBTQ plus content, so if you enjoyed this you definitely want to subscribe and stick around to see what's coming up. Um, I hope everybody is staying happy, healthy, and safe, and I hope that somewhere out there there is a great book waiting just for you. With lesbians.